Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everyone. Developers and this is this session is asking developers. Um, can we have a show of hands who are developers for Wikimedia, Media Wiki, Pi Wikipedia, bots, something else? Okay. And um, our format is that Brian Lane and I will roam the room. Uh, you hold up your hand. We pick you. You ask. Uh, you stand up. Tell us who you are. You ask your question. Yes. We'll find someone to answer okay. it. So it's really simple, and we're going to uh, do that until time runs out. Time runs out at 14.55. Any questions? It probably makes sense for you guys to talk about what stuff you're working on, just so people know. Yeah, maybe everyone could, all the developers could introduce themselves. What's being held? Oh, yes. Okay, I'm here. Do you want to give a quick two sentence thing? About what? About what, what it is you develop on. I think Or just in general.
back has trouble hearing, um, there are a lot of free seats here. So um, if you want to be more part of the session, we're probably invited to come and sit closer to everyone else. Or we're doing or and Daniel. Options. So if you'd like to introduce yourself. Oh, sure. I'm a developer. Uh, I used to uh, volunteer as a uh, maintainer of the search engine for about a year and a half. And I have used the uh, labs infrastructure from the beginning. I used to uh, put that some hard working to make the analytic and supporting information with uh, other software like uh, movie. Anyone else? Daniel? I'm, I'm just an admin guy in ops doing random stuff. Which is um, very important. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, uh, so those were the introductions. Um, let's get the Q&A started. Who wants to pick up? Yeah, can you, yeah, you, you just introduce okay. yourself. Yeah. I'm Warren Bush, again. Um, I've, I've been working on a little server. I've had lots of, uh, so I'll be trying to set up a demo for what you and a bunch of other stuff. And it, it goes up, it goes down. Uh, sometimes the server is up, but you can't track anything. Sometimes uh, you can't access the HTTP. Like about half the time, during the my critical time, I know before that it was great, but how are you going to stabilize this? This is tool server or tool apps? Tool labs. This, the, Okay, so the current issues with Tool Labs are with the NFS storage. Um, Should we explain what Tool Labs is? Tool Labs is a replacement for the Tool Server. So if you know what Tool Server is, then you know what Tool Labs is. If you do not know what Tool Server is, um, it's an environment for you to run simple tools uh, like web tools, if you've ever seen X's edit counter, for instance, um, or um, the GeoHack um, for the mapping services like that, um, or bots that uh, edit Wikipedia or related projects or Wikipedia things. Um, this is an environment for you to run your own bot or tool um, on our infrastructure rather than running on your own. Um, so the NFS services that are behind it, we were originally using Bluster, which we all, uh, anyone that has used the system knows that was not going very well either. Um, storage has been playing this for quite a long time now, and the NFS server was meant to replace that. Um, we have uh, a system that's set up in such a way that it's fairly redundant the way that it works, but we're having hardware issues with the RAID controller. Um, we've look, we're looking at uh, upgrading firmware, we're looking at maybe trying to change out the, um, to the other node to see if maybe one of the pieces has hardware failure or not. Can you make any predictions on when you will have um, so stabilized? We have been stabilized more and more over the past uh, two months. We hope to have it fully stabilized any day now, not really, <laughs> probably a month. Um, we're, we're coping in a month or two at, at most. It has become a massive problem, but um, we have been looking at ways to make it, even with it being a problem, making it less of a problem. For instance, we've upped the amount of cash that is being used, which is kind of dangerous if the power goes out, but um, it at least causes the um, issues that you see occur much less frequently. Next question. is that uh, no, the, the statistics in some of the language Wikipedia's are not so much available. So for example, the search trends you can get from Google, but uh, for example, the Wikipedia search trends we don't get. So I did a bit of research and uh, no, I think the, the dump of the search, uh, search terms you know, kind of discontinued after, after it was introduced some time back. So this kind of uh, information will be useful for the language Wikipedia. So if there are any plan, and also language Wikipedia will so, so is your question, how can I get access to more data so I can make my own statistics, is that? Yes, of course, um, I mean, top 10 search words in a week, would be, that kind of information would be useful. But then uh, if the dump is available, then maybe people can, uh, can innovate more. So let me speak a little bit to that. Uh, so I am Sumana, I am with the engineering community team at the Wikimedia Foundation. and. There is a somewhat new team within Wikimedia Engineering 
that I don't think has any representatives in this particular panel, which is, it's called analytics. And analytics is statistics about people's usage of and contribution to Wikimedia projects. The head of the analytics team is Toby Negrin. He's not here, but there's a number of other people who are here from analytics. Um, now, there is an analytics mailing list. Uh, and there's an analytics uh, page on MediaWiki.org, and uh, they're very accessible to uh, uh, to people who want. Basically, they have two parts of their team. There's the part of the team that's building the infrastructure so that people like you will be able to get the answers that you want, uh, and, and uh, then there's the part of the team that's analysts who basically just go ahead and take your take questions and answer them. And they have, you know, a backlog of questions that they answer, so they aren't able to answer everything very quickly. But, you know, they are willing to, like, take questions and say, okay, well, we'll get you an answer at some point. So, in this particular case, um, it sounds like the use case here is, uh, which Wikipedias do you tend to edit? Telugu. Okay. Telugu, right. So, Telugu, like, lots of Wikipedias, you know, the search terms that, that you'd like, you'd like to understand who's getting to your wiki. Right and using what search terms. So that sounds like something that's generally applicable. That like not just Telugu, but a lot of people might want that. So on the small case, you want to understand how people are getting to Telugu Wikipedia and how to, in some cases, maybe increase your search rate. Right. So that's an individual question that maybe one of the analysts would be able to help you with. But in the larger case, people wanting to understand and thus do better search optimization on. Their, uh, you know, their their projects like that might be something that the infrastructure people might end up building into the, the tools they make publicly available. Does that sound about right to you, Rob? Yeah. So does that help you? Yeah. I, I met with some other people. Made it. Okay. What what sort of metrics are you interested in specifically? Um, I mean, for example, I don't know what are the kind of articles they are looking for, and but they, they don't find in the. Yeah, the problem with search, search terms is like you have to be very careful about what you're going to For example, uh, American oh, passwords, oh, American yeah. online, they can stay you know, saying, okay, we're going to release all these search, search terms. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get rid of your IP, we'll get rid of your email address, but they still end up bringing a huge amount of personal information that you can figure out just by being able to go So we have to be very careful about it. It, it might be possible to ask a question to the analytics team and have them actually come up with the results for you. Um, that's probably the, the, the best way of going about it because otherwise it is very difficult to find search logs. But so, uh, I think the best way to get about that is create an issue in Boxella and that should find its way. Yeah. But, but I, I, I will say to Matt Flash's point um, that we're, we're sort of uh, desperately under-resourced in terms of um, <coughs> analyst capacity, people actually analyzing and studying the data. But that's something that doesn't require access to actual infrastructure. So if you can identify data sets or sets of data or possible bits of information, it would be unproblematic to at least from, from, from the privacy information, then there is a far greater chance that you can get a, a, a data set and, and analyze it and or, or solicit um, you know, contributions from, from other community members and trying to understand it. So um, yeah, approach one of us here and, and, and we can try and help you think that. Yeah, you can definitely file a bug and they have a product in bugs that they just reset questions. That's an appropriate way for to ask for analytics questions. Obviously there's no guarantee that they're going to say yes. So I wanted to point out on meta.wikimedia.org, for people who are just interested in finding out more data about the Wikimedia projects and digging through the logs that are publicly accessible already, um, there's this page, research colon data, that's part of the hub for people who want like, to do research on Wikimedia projects. And so you can see at a glance how to access the, the data dumps, the API, uh, page <coughs> stats, uh, data, stuff like that. I just wanted to point that out. Would, the, would actually the page stats uh, report the uh, frequently visited pages that uh, don't have uh, articles? Um, that don't have articles, you said? So if I'm looking for, I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, searches that end up with uh, that end up with no articles. Is that what you mean? 
what he's asking about what are the most requested articles that don't actually exist as far as understood. Maybe the actual uh, uh, access logs. Yeah, if you go to the next question. Maybe we can move on to another one. Go to the next question because yeah. we're going very detailed. Yeah. And take it offline if, if you have to, please. Um, next question. Don't be shy. Go ahead, Amir. Actually, yeah, I have an idea about uh, using Parson and uh, Vision Editor. I told that, uh, but I think I have to say it again here. Um, I'm thinking about using Wikitext, uh, using Wikitext or uh, Visual Editor outside of Wiki. Look uh, in the blogs, in forums, in some some places like that. Because it's very useful and it's very hard to use uh, HTML tags in forums or blogs like WordPress. You can talk to developers of WordPress and provide your what you are doing to them. Is the question uh, can Visual Editor be used outside of Media yeah. Wiki? Yes. Yeah? So if there was actually there was some discussion on the Ethernet Live mailing list about using Visual Editor to support Ethernet Live by default, especially since Visual Editor is also built for the library. But it didn't go anywhere, sadly, because nobody took charge of it. But Not yet. Uh, okay. It doesn't need wiki text. You can make a folder too. Yeah. So you can use Visual Editor without wiki text and without parser. Like, in fact, if you're using WordPress, you probably don't want to import wiki text. Right. But how how WordPress plugin integration of which I do, which would be the first one, most likely. And that would just be something you install and download, and it just works out of the box. Um, but Visualizer Vis itself is still data and still has lots of issues and needs lots of improvements before it's better than WordPress. So, is now a good time for people who want to start being the liaisons between Visual Editor and some other CMS to like start understanding it so they can implement that? Or should they wait? I would say they should wait because uh, if there's at least a less existing content because Visual Editor is right now geared to a specific subset of HTML and won't digest any kind of HTML. So if you have very complex HTML and CMS and uh, show Visual Editor it, it will not be and, um, So if you start out from scratch, then Visual Editor might not be good right now. But if you have complex stuff, not so much. It is also good to highlight that it takes certain level of effort to produce a product for one specific like now for, for media wiki for instance then you have if you want to become upstream for different products it takes an extra effort you have to document you have to listen many other requirements and implement them and then it takes even another level of effort to then inject this as a proposal for any other project around and these two segments of work they are not trivial at all Uh, 
Um, it would be nice to, yes. Um, so that would take um, forever developments and puppets. Um, Should we have a privatized instance that is not really ready for use without it? But we use puppets to set up our own test sometimes. So yeah. it's not that far away. Yeah, your entire project is completely puppetized, which is very good. Um, Do I need it up? For the most part. Um, I think it's useful for people to start saying for like research work and all that. Could we maybe get the estimate of what that might be happening? For Wikidata? Um, yeah, we probably need to get together with Wikidata people to actually make this occur, to add the support into a single or something along those lines. Is it, where do people find information about this project, about single WD Wiki? Do a search in Wikidata for, um, well, actually go to comments and help. It's easier. Okay. In there, there is uh, single instance media wiki host. Yes, yes. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, wikitech.wikimedia.org is a useful resource to find out more about Wikimedia Labs and about the work that the operations department does. Uh, in addition to, of course, the monthly engineering report and so on. So um, here on Wikitech, you see that there's a bunch of information about Labs itself. Um, Wikimedia Labs, the environment for you to set up your own uh, innovation. And uh, so here, there's some information about single node media, Wiki, which is probably useful to people even outside of Wikimedia Labs, right? Yes. Uh, well, so actually, for outside of Wikimedia Labs, or for outside of Wikimedia Labs, you probably want to use Vagrant, which or you can talk about it because it's. Is there anyone here who's ever had trouble setting up their own MediaWiki installation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, Ori, do you want to speak a little bit about what you did with Vagrant? The question is, who does not have a problem? Oh, yeah. Where's Chen, right? I even have media wiki so that when this and the other thing is integrated with you. Installing is usually one thing, upgrading. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that's particularly challenging about configuring MediaWiki or any form of server software for that matter is, if you're, especially if you're installing it on the same computer you use for everyday work, um, one is you might not have an operating system that's compatible. The operating system that you're running might not have as detailed documentation and support. Um, and you might be anxious about configuring a lot of software that's later going to remain on your computer um, that's going to be difficult to clean up and manage. And so an approach to doing this form of development that um, works for many cases is to use something called a virtual machine, which is um, basically a piece of software for running a mini computer inside your computer. So. Um, its entire hard drive uh, exists as a file on your disk and it doesn't um, touch your settings and it doesn't require installing any software and it just runs in the background. And so what MediaWiki Vision is, is it's a tool for automating the creation of a virtual machine like that on your computer. Um, it, automates not only the installation of MediaWiki, but at this point of a number of different extensions and related pieces of software, like Visual Editor, like Parsoid, like Scribuntu, um, a number of, of uh, extensions that are deployed on the production cluster, and there are a number of developers at the Wikimedia Foundation that use it. I know that it was also used, um, I can't speak to its popularity or success, but it was used by the Wikidata folk. Um, I'm not sure what the status of um, this continues. Okay, but um, if 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 you happen to be uh, Garrett Savvy, um, there's a patch. It's a draft, so it might not be visible unless you go to it directly. Um, but it's well, just uh, undrafted. Um, but it, uh, I'll Live now for your perusal. Done. Uh, 70657, which is um, the beginning of a 
import of the puppet configuration um, for Wikidata into this project. And if I know that there are people waiting for something like this, um, I think it'll help drive development and coordination with Wikidata and so on. Um, I'm certainly super excited about Wikidata myself. So um, I'd be interested to mess around with it and certainly like collaboration and mapping. So um, a lot of the code that's used Daniel, in Daniel, you've minus one to this, just so you know. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's really incomplete. It's like a quick like that. But um, I just wanted to mention that uh, you should talk to Katie about the, the compatibility. So a, a lot of the code that's being used in the Baker stuff is also the same code that's being used in the labs for a similar uh, meeting. So we should probably coordinate these things that are to make it work in both labs and data. I'm a selling this. Vagrant is pretty awesome. It yeah. makes things really, really seamless, especially if you're dealing with like the kind of dependency to get like parser and visualizer and script boot to up and running. Um, it's not just useful to learn how to use Vagrant for me quickly. It's increasingly used by lots of open source projects to help you get up and running quickly. So I definitely recommend giving it a try. I, uh, as a person who runs events, I used to think, well, at events, it's just not worth it to have people completely new to MediaWiki development have to set up MediaWiki. And so we were concentrating on other things we could help people learn to do, like gadgets or, or maybe making their apps work with the API. But now that MediaWiki Vagrant is more stable, maybe upcoming <coughs> outreach events could actually include, hey, here's how you administer MediaWiki. Uh, bandwidth, yes. We should probably move on to the next question. Yeah. I actually want to address this whole thing. But I think there are a number of people that haven't asked questions, and I'm worried that if we keep sure. going back to the same people, then they'll just be further discouraged. So if you haven't asked a question, please do. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Lou uh, Berlin. Uh, can we get to better documentation on the recent changes for MATLRC, especially for non-edit changes? The, the, can we get better documentation on uh, the recent changes for MATLRC? <coughs> uh -huh. Okay, so let me make sure I understand. So um, I know that there is, uh, so the recent changes, uh, and there's a MediaWiki bit of the API, you can call to find out about recent changes, and I think there are. Oh, this is on IRC. Is so it calling? Is it not calling I can, the API? I can explain this. So, um, operations has uh, Mark very specifically set up uh, an IRC server. That's IRC that we created. Or um, MediaWiki has the ability to write in. Uh, I think it sends you emails or something like that across about the recent changes that occur. It writes it into um, the IRC as a read-only IRC that people then subscribe to to get changes back about what's going on in, uh, in the wiki. Yes, there should probably definitely be some format uh, documentation. Uh, there's a number of people that can probably do this. Peter Bennett is probably a very good resource for this. Maybe uh, Damian Drama. It does not necessarily need to be um, the foundation staff. Think there's a number of volunteers that are pro probably going to format much better than we do. Okay. The, the problem with this is um, or at least it was for many years that IRC is like maybe you got media for something like this. So it will just randomly drop stuff or cut stuff off and the format is not really uh, designed for machine consumption. So it will yeah. see so some of the things that make it possible to parse. Anyone else? Well, well, I'm already just wants to make a plan. Uh, there's uh, an excellent patch that was uploaded initially by Victor Vazilev um, that starts doing the work of creating a duplicate stream that's encoded in JSON and that isn't subject to all of these quirks. Um, and it's actually really far along. Um, Victor abandoned it for a while, but um, it's been picked up by another volunteer, Alex Monk. And this is, um, even if you don't have development experience, you can use that to, um, to track how this is going. I, I really think it's, it's actually um, pretty reasonably close to, to getting merged. It only solves the MediaWiki architecture side of it, so getting MediaWiki to emit a stream of these events to another server on the cluster. Um, there still needs to be um, a lot of discussion about how to actually expose it. Um, 
but it is it is uh, being sort of volunteer driven. So um, for that, in Tool Labs, if you have an account, um, Yuvi Panda and Peter Benna are working on taking that JSON stream if it occurs and um, and putting it into Redis um, or some other kind of pub sub style um, architectures that you can immediately get the changes and actually have them be reliable. So that would be for consumption on labs. On labs. Um, there's also the possibility that that will open it up to um, access via um, a WebSocket API of some variety. Yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. I mean, a couple of years ago, I tried to expose the stream via XMPP. There's an extension called XMLRC, uh, but it got stuck on the fact that, it's, well, it requires us to run an uh, XMPP server, and the whole pop up mess for XMPP is just very hard to do. But yeah, the, the video we set up also works. Yeah, yeah, just adding now also are the speeds of recent changes, but I always thought it's unfortunate that they show the full diff. Instead of uh, and I would really where would we have to go to change the format of the recent changes to RSS feeds? Yeah, that to patch is probably a really good way of going about this. And then there's an extension called Wiki Feeds that allows you to do stuff like give me an RSS feed of changes just in that category, just for that user, and like many more options that I always thought would maybe be nice to include in core. Uh, I and, wanted and to this, point sorry, out. And this is actually a good answer. So I don't think you want a new feature and you want to wait to get to maintenance mode because this is not going to work. So you really need to push a new feature thing like this for, for a long time instead of holding the thing somewhere else. Um, I wanted to point out one or two things uh, just for, for folks like you, Andrew, and I'll everybody else that um, we do try to talk publicly on MediaWiki.org about what our engineering goals are and what our teams are doing even on a month by month basis. So we have a page here for 2013-14 goals and we have um, a roadmap here which covers some stuff for uh, the next few months. And we update it regularly. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's more like we're telling us I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Orange. It seems to be more like you're telling us what, what all, the, all the cool things you're planning to do, but not so much uh, uh, the place to make the request and stand there is a new process to do with the uh, RFC. Okay, that's in the 20 minutes when we're talking about transparency and collaboration with Wikimedia Engineering. Thank <laughs> you. 
asking for uh, developers to each talk about a small thing they did that had a big impact on the Wikimedia editor and community. John Robson. <laughs> <laughs> small thing? Um, I think. Um, so one of the things we did this year was we added a button to the top of um, mobile articles, which prompted users to add an image to this article. Just um, we actually had a bit of a selfie apocalypse for that work, which was um, lots of people uploaded images, but they weren't necessarily the images we wanted. There's a lot of people taking pictures themselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had to make the button less prominent. Um, it felt a bit more under control and the quality of uploads was better, but still there's a lot of copy bias on through. It's still not perfect, but it did have a big impact on it. Just by making it more apparent to people that they could actually upload an image to an article um, in countries where you feel in that way, um, which wasn't, well, I think it's not an obvious thought, but how you can't wait for it. So you work better than this. I'll speak of that. Instead of like mobile editing. Yeah, we want to be talking about mobile editing. Yeah, another small thing that bubbled it that I think like a big impact, but a positive one, was that they added a, a button at the end of an article that said, read this in another language. So on desktop, interlanguage things are sort of bar which I think only reads. But here, like I've had lots of people tell me that I'm looking this up and now I discover that this is actually not just English, but in other languages as well. And that is actually like a really small thing because like I don't know, we didn't really spend that much time on it, but I think it had a good amount of impact, at least from where it comes. There's, there's another reason why it's visible on mobile is because you have collapsed sections. Right. So yeah. it actually reached the bottom of the page. Yeah, so, okay. yeah I don't have very well, this is too much text, I'm not really going to go to the end. <laughs> um, one, one other feature that um, Brad George implemented um, was the uh, template sandbox, which is, a, um, uh, which is basically a, a small tool that allows you to preview what a change to a template would look like on another page so that you don't have to go through it and save off the copy of the page or whatever is this nice little um, Oh, okay, I'm not going to have the, wife, uh, the bandwidth to demo it, but uh, basically when you actually edit a page, you know how, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure this out later, sorry. Um, <laughs> but when you edit a template, just the next time you edit a template on any MediaWiki uh, page, on any template on any Wikimedia project, look at the bottom of the page for some uh, extra options you might not have noticed that help you see how other pages will look with your version of the template. And you can also go to a special pool on template sandbox <coughs> any wiki. Yes, it's very helpful. We also did a okay. special page to look something similar like this ages ago, didn't you? Yeah. You did a special page? No, no, no. no. Uh, I think it was a template and we have one conversation at a time. Yeah. I tried to install a visual editor on a different wiki and it was a bit like you need, first you need to install this and there's a dependency and try if that works and uh, in, in the end uh, it didn't work at all. Uh, and has this installation process become easier? I think visual editor is actually pretty easy to install. No. <laughs> 
Well, it wasn't for her, though. <laughs> I think the issue might be more that you have to stop crossing the Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but is there someone who has some right now we hear about composer yeah. and uh, well, a composer would not be very helpful. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I said, oh gosh, like as I'm playing the guinea pig and working through this, it sure would be nice if I had a real notification using notifications framework about the fact that I had just been added to this. And then like we put it in as a bug in Bugzilla, assuming like, okay, we'll get to this someday. And then like, I don't know, a few hours later, it's like, oh, it works now. Thank you, Alex <laughs> Monk. Oh, Matt? Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm mentoring a couple of students for a Google Summer of Code this summer. Uh, Richard Jane uh, and uh, we're cool with another student. Uh, uh, Richard is working on uh, inline comments uh, for video key. It's literally a sort of type. But it, 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 <coughs> yeah, you can actually try it if you want. It's uh, annotator.wmflabs.org. Uh, and basically, it allows you Present. UV? Yay. Yeah, yeah. Jeroen? 
So who doesn't know what Kubusama code is? How about, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out. <laughs> So uh, the Wikimedia Foundation Engineering Department has two internship programs currently that we run, both of which are in partnership with certain other organizations. And this summer we have 20 interns, uh, 19 of whom are under the summer, Google Summer of Code, which we do in coordination with Google, and one of whom is through uh, the Outreach Program for Women, which we do in coordination with the GNOME Foundation a different open source organization. Um, overall, we have about a third of our interns overall this summer, about a third of our 20 interns are women or genderqueer, um, which is a lot better than we've done in previous years and is a, a very <coughs> encouraging upward trend. So each of these interns works for three months, full time, uh, about 40 hours a week, uh, on improving some aspect of our open source <coughs> software uh, or, or related things. Uh, so we've had interns in the past who very much improved Upload Wizard, which is how people upload themes onto MediaWiki. Um, we've had people improve our, our mobile interface, uh, and we've had people, uh, we currently have a number of people improving various aspects of Visual Editor. Um, and uh, we have a, you know, a table here of what everybody's working on this summer. Um, and uh, one, at least we have one of our current GSOC students, Leon Jen, who's here at Wikimania, although I haven't seen her uh, today. Uh, and uh, most of these people are on uh, IRC a lot. They're all available via email. And they all put out uh, weekly or monthly status reports so you can keep up on what they're doing. And Kim is uh, administering all this this summer. So it's, it's a wonder that he gets any sleep at all. So thank you, Kim. Is there anything else that I didn't get to here? No, that's great. And right. really, you should participate. Uh, do we actually have any students here? Any students? Anyone who's audience? a student at all, yeah. We right. have one student. You have not been to Google Summer Code yet? Yeah. I'm yours not allowed. We will bully you at the bully. He may have to move to a different country because Google, oh, US, no. yeah. yeah. Seriously. Um, but in general, uh, I want to also mention, and we'll talk about this a little in what's happening in just a few minutes, transparency and collaboration with Wikimedia Engineering. Even if you don't consider yourself very technical, we need you as a domain expert. We're currently doing a lot of pairing technical and non-technical experts as mentors and coaches for our summer interns. Um, because you know how stuff ought to work on your project and what might be useful to you, and you can test out prototypes, and you can encourage people who um, fall over and feel bad about it. So, Matt? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe OPW does not have to be coding. You also need QA and documentation on the work. Absolutely. OPW, the Outreach Program for Women, uh, that those internships happen both in the Northern Hemisphere summer, but also January through March. Um, anyone who is a woman or genderqueer or gender fluid is welcome to apply. It's not limited to students and it's not limited to coding tasks. Uh, people have worked on marketing, system administration, design, documentation, both manual and automated testing and so on. And uh, we'll, we'll be putting out word on, on the blog and so on, uh, Wikimedia, uh, the blog.wikimedia.org when it's time to tell people to apply and, and push things up. I think that ends the session. Thank you for asking your questions. Uh, thank you for participating in the discussion. Um, see you again next year. Um, yeah, this, this is a session we try to do every year. Um, and do prepare your questions because that definitely helps the speed of the, of the meeting. Thanks. Thanks. So now, if I can get Kim and Andre to the stage, uh, we are giving a talk now uh, for the next about 25 to 30 minutes called Transparency and Collaboration with Media Engineering. And for those people who need to switch rooms right now, I'll give them a moment to do that.